Well, hi everyone. Thank you very much for being here. This is my uh, first time speaking in Bulgaria and also my second time at the World Camp, so I'm very excited to be here with all of you. Uh, I do see some familiar faces here, but for those of you who I don't know, my name is Katarina. I work at the big Cybram family. Now, Cybram is a web hosting company. We don't sell socks, as many people think. Uh, we are in the market with 15 years uh, now, and it's an independently owned company. And I started four years ago in, at a customer care position in our office in Madrid, because at the moment I was living there. And later on, I moved back to Bulgaria and started working in our affiliate partnerships team in Sofia, where our headquarters office is. Because what I've done best and what I still do best, hopefully, it's uh, to connect with people and establish meaningful relationships. So this is basically my job right now. I, every day I look for new opportunities, I find new partners, and I also help uh, with the optimization of already established ones. And this, is, this has been a very long and exciting journey for me because SiteGround is a place where you learn, you grow, but also most of all you challenge yourself every single day. So the topic of my presentation is uh, how to win partnerships in business. And the first question you need to ask yourself will be to why does my business need a partnership and does my business need one? Need one? And there is a simple answer, which is yes, because a successful partnership will help your business grow and will help your business expand in a way that usually cannot do on its own. So, and you know that once, once you create a business, it's because you want to earn some revenue. And everybody wants to earn more revenue. And this is what you do with partnerships. And recently, I was in Italy with uh, some of my colleagues. And uh, you know, when you're in Italy, pasta is often the answer to everything, which got me thinking about something, about an example for this presentation. So just imagine that you're an artisan and you sell all types of pasta. You sell fusilli, macaroni, tagliatelli, linguini, all the pasta that you can imagine. You love it, you do it with your heart. And everybody loves it because it's crafted, it's homemade, it's just fantastic. And people come to your specific shop just because of it. But what happens when your clients come to you, comes to you and they ask you, okay, I found the pasta I love, do you have tomato sauce? And then you know that there's something is missing and then you have an opportunity to... to create more revenue by adding a product that you don't have the expertise to produce. And this is when you know that you have to find somebody for that. But what it actually takes to find someone, I will share in the next slides. So, I have a simple recipe which consists of two ingredients. And the first one will be to find a mutual business benefit. You need to find something that is truly good for both sides because this is how you can create a win-win situation. So, you sell your pasta, but Paolo sells tomato sauce. And Paolo, just like you, shares your values and he loves his to do things homemade. He, he crafts his own tomato sauce. Um, but the, when, at the moment when you offer to Paolo to sell his sauce in your shop, this is an obvious benefit for him because he just like you would like his sauce to be reached by more people. And the second thing in this, and the second ingredient of my recipe would be to add a spoonful of human and personal touch. Because Paolo 
not only shares your visions about business and how to do it, but he also loves football games. And you have seen him to go to the same stadiums as you. And you wonder why this is valuable information? Well, it is because this is something small that is very human and very dear to both of you and also gives you ground to start a conversation, further bond with him and share your business ideas with him. And yes, the slide says simple recipe, but actually these ingredients take a lot of effort and business and human understanding. And in the upcoming slides, I will share with you my personal partnership process and my beliefs on what are the, the ways to increase your success chances on each of the steps of the process. So I identify six steps, which are to define the partner, the, define the profile of the partner, to research them, approach them, convince, deliver to the partner, and then maintain the, the relationship. So the first step would be to define who will be a possible partner. And this is somebody who has to have, who can help you achieve your goal, but also have a need of his own that your organization can, can fulfill. And for example, on a daily basis now I work with a lot of uh, web agencies and designers who happen to have clients who are constantly looking for quality hosting recommendations. And this creates a perfect opportunity for us, which is why we approach them with our affiliate program, because then we have uh, a different situation. First, uh, these agencies, they get commissions for referring their customers to us. Second, we have access to their client's base. And the third, actually win here, is that the clients are finally happy and satisfied because they were looking for a quality hosting. And last but not least, uh, you need to remember that... Uh, sorry, I got nervous here. Uh, it needs to be someone that... Uh, you need to remember the human part here because it needs to be someone that you're feeling comfortable working with. The next step will be to research the business and the people. This is important because the more you know about the business of that organization that you like, the profile that you found and you like, uh, the more you know about them, the more you know about the history of the business, their values, and also what kind of clients they have, will increase your chances of closing a deal with them. And when it comes to the people, you need to find the right person to contact. You cannot just shoot for the HR and or uh, someone that has nothing to do with your business goal. You need to find the correct person to contact, so to be able to establish a real conversation and further relationship. For example, in SiteGround uh, years ago, when uh, content delivery technology became popular, we started looking for partnerships and we really liked Cloudflare. And we started researching that company, and then we identified the head of their business development, and luckily for us, it turned out that uh, this woman was also from Bulgaria. And as you know, Cyberout is a Bulgarian company, so the good thing was, the good and truly valuable thing about this piece of information that we found is that this actually gives the grounds for that human connection and establishing a conversation with this person and starting the whole process. So the next, uh, the next step would be to approach that person. Once you have identified who's the right one, you can do it in many ways. The most professional way would be to do it by email, but unfortunately not everyone reads their emails, not everyone replies to them on time, things get delayed, and this also happens with uh, social media like LinkedIn and Twitter. 
which is why events like the World Camps are fantastic because you can meet people directly, you can bond much faster, you connect easier, someone can introduce you to someone else. And the best part about the World Camps and similar events is that um, you, you can research them initially and you can research who will be there and you can approach them directly. But also these people can introduce you to someone else. And even if you don't have a base or ground for a mutual project at the moment, that does not mean that in the future they might they will won't remember you or won't consider you about some other project or won't refer you to someone else. And there is another secret about these events, and this is uh, the fact that a lot of the people, a lot of the attendees that come here or uh, attend other work camps go alone. And believe me, all these people will be thrilled to have someone that is genuinely interested in what they do and what's their job or just to meet some new people. So don't miss the opportunity to talk to people or to talk to everyone that you can you think will be interesting because people will also love to talk about themselves and you never know what can happen. The fourth step after you've done all the job till here will be to convince them. So once you've once you've found the right contact and you have approached them, you need to be very specific in what you want from them. You need to tell them exactly what, what you want and what they can expect. Don't tell these people uh, what you think they might want to hear. It doesn't work like that because people don't have time for novels, especially when it comes to email or internet communication. This will show that you value their time when you're specific and concise. Also, you need to show, when you convince someone, you need to show that you have a good, good understanding of what they do. Because this shows seriousness, respect, and also it shows to that person that you're talking to that they're important for you, and they'll appreciate it. And sometimes we, uh, we receive uh, requests or which basically say, hey, uh, we, we love SiteGround, let's do something together. And you're like, okay, but you're telling me that I, it's nice that you appreciate our company and what we do, but tell me exactly what you want, because right now I see that you don't have a plan. And it's not really good, because I really don't know what to expect from you either. And then there's the other example with agencies, for example, that come to us and say, hey, we have... Uh, we have a lot of clients, we are growing super fast, yeah. our clients need support, I hear yours is excellent. And this is where I know that this person comes with an idea and knows what he's looking for. And I also know what I can offer to them. And the last uh, bit from this part, it's also really important to stay flexible and to be open for new ideas. Because during communication, ideas may change. and the entire concept of a partnership can change and you shouldn't close your doors if the initial project doesn't work out because better solutions can come up. So, now that we have a deal, <laughs> there are two more steps which are the final steps and are probably the most important ones. And one of them will be to deliver what is promised. To keep your promise in, from the agreement and to make things happen. Because if you remember Paolo, your friend that you go to a football game with, who sells pasta, uh, who sells tomato sauce, uh, you promised to him that you're going to order a table, you're going to put it in your fine shop in the middle of it so you can give him premium exposure, but you forgot to order that table and you postpone it with a week. And Paolo is a bit irritated now. And what happens when the next week you don't find the time to order the table? You postpone it with another week. And Paolo gets not, not only frustrated, but very disappointed. 
and he, he has all the rights to be disappointed. Um, so, because you not only show him that you don't keep your promise and you don't deliver what you agreed for, Paolo already produced that extra homemade exquisite sauce for you, the one that you wanted so badly. And this sauce will go to waste. And this is the moment when all of your initial effort, all of the effort you put in the, the initial steps, goes absolutely to waste. Because this is the moment when you lose trust in this person. And this is very important, and you should remember this, because when you keep your promises and when you deliver what you agreed in first place, this is when you tell this person, I am committed, or you tell your partner, I am committed to this business, I want to work together with you, and an image is born. And what happens then? One day in the future, Paolo will have a friend that sells pesto and he'll tell him about you. And then when you repeat the entire process and you keep your promises to this new person, your business will expand even more. And the last and final step from my personal approach and process will be to maintain the relationship with these people. It, this is essential because many people make the mistake to think that once a partnership is established, that's it, the end, it will evolve alone. And this is really wrong because you shouldn't let it grow stagnant, you shouldn't let it grow cold. You need to continue communicating with Paolo and your other partners. You need to make sure that he stays with you. You need to make sure that he's updated on any organizational or development changes that your business might experience. You need to also think of a clearly business point of view just to improve that partnership. It doesn't have to always stay as it was agreed in the first place. You can make promotions, you can change things, you can add more products. Just things of way to make things better for you, for him, and for your clients. After all, that's why your business will be growing. And to summarize on what it takes to win business partners, I can only speak from experience, but during the last years I've worked with many people from different countries, and I learned one thing, and this is that no matter what the industry you're in, there are two essential things uh, to build a meaningful synergy among entrepreneurs. And they're to have a win-win situation, and also for both parties to trust each other. And you are the one that lays the foundation since the beginning. Thank you. Questions? Okay. So you you said that um, finding a partner is really important after all. Mm -hmm. Find a partner, he said that you need to connect with the person mm -hmm. in the company after all. So, how do you target people like in a company? How do you have a specific approach to go to a company and say, Yeah, I, I would like to try with that person to talk to? Like, how do you target the person in the company to talk to? Well, it, it really depends what your business is about, but for example, now we what I do is I look for agencies. I look for agencies or web designers or bloggers and I research them in the internet because it's an online world, the one we're working. And um, that's why when I mentioned that it's important to define a partner, you have to really have a clear idea of who will be a good fit because as mentioned with the agencies, you have plenty of agencies, they're great, but for example, if they work with ASP.NET, even if the agency is fantastic, it's of no use for me or for our clients because we, we don't work with the same services. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome presentation. Thank you.
I, I have a question as well. Say I am Paolo and I make uh, the best, the best, the I need them. Mm -hmm. And I team up with uh, Giuseppe who provides the tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. But then I decide that I also want to team up with Alberto who has the best parmesan. And my clients are super happy. So I go down that slippery slope and I team up with uh, someone else who uh, offers mozzarella. We have someone yeah. else who offers uh, basil pesto, and at the end of the day, I have so many partnerships to handle that I yeah. don't really have the time to make the pasta. My uh, question is, <laughs> my question is, um, you know, this is a lot of use case yeah. for a smaller business. Do you have any tips for handling that, for sort of like streamlining the nurturing of these partnerships? Yeah, I mean, of course. Like, if if you if you first start business with Paolo with the tomato sauce, and then with Giuseppe with the pesto, and then find uh, Mattia with the parmesan and mozzarella, it's uh, it will be much easier for you because you're gonna have more partners, you're gonna sell more products, more clients will come to you, and you have a lot more revenue than you initially planned. So you can also hire more people when you don't need to be on your own. I mean, and it's good, and this is good, it's good to delegate things to other people, to trust other people to handle what they do best. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Who wants to ask? No, don't be shy. Bishop, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. Just a moment. Okay. Yeah. So you said uh, when you are targeting somebody at the company, don't target the each the, the, the HR. Do you have any recommendations, <laughs> or, or maybe I didn't understand? No, I mean it was just an example because, uh, for example, that. Um, you need to find the first. You need to have a clear business goal for your for your own business. It doesn't mean that if you contact a technical support or HR or someone else from that particular company, won't be valuable or won't be actually the right person. But normally, when it comes to small businesses, there or or larger businesses, they have, they have their different types of departments. So if you want to do something which is strictly technical, you can already go maybe for... Actually, you, you can go for the HR because this person could also refer you to someone else or to forward your communication and introduce you to that the right person for you. It's just that you need to find the one which is re strictly related to what you actually want to achieve. Because if you were, if you are, I don't know what you, what uh, do you do or what do you have in mind right now for a, for a business or who to contact. But if you do something strictly technical, it's always better to contact maybe the head of business development in that department. Or if you do, if you are researching something related to human resources, then go for the HR. So basically it will depend on what you want to do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You, you just need to have your first to clear your ideas and then define your business goals and then define who is actually a good fit for your company and then you can find the right person in their business. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, is it offensive if we negotiate too much with our partner? For example, if things started good, but he, my partner started putting some awful conditions on me. It's not offensive at all. Like you, you should draw the line when it doesn't work. When it doesn't, if it's offensive for you, if it's too much hassle for you, if things get really difficult and you don't see a value in it, or you see that it consumes too much energy for you. You, you should be able to tell enough, like, let's just keep the, maintain the good tone and stop the communication here. I don't think, I don't think it's offensive. Uh, I've had to deal with uh, clients like that or partners like that. At some point, 
you just have to draw a line because if you don't see future together and if things are becoming difficult from the beginning or at some point and both sides can overcome them, it's just better to go separate ways. So we should never over negotiate. Well, it really depends what you're looking for. If you give me an example, like a real life situation, maybe I can give you a more accurate advice because um, at some moments, uh, even when things get difficult, that doesn't mean that uh, you cannot overcome them. It depends on how you see things. Because sometimes uh, uh, you can think, that's it, I'm done, I can't do more, I'm tired. And then you keep going because you know what's your end goal and you know what you want to achieve. So you don't stop here and you don't <coughs> stop over negotiating or changing the terms. It really, really depends on each situation. Okay, thank you. If you, if you have a, an example that, that you want to discuss, we can do it after if you want, if you don't, if you prefer. Okay. Anybody else? Mm. Okay. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, would it be a conflict of interest, let's say, let's say, a, let's say I launch a hosting company and also mm. promote your company? Would it be a conflict of interest to do both? Or um, in case scenario? It, it can be at some point, but on the other hand, it could also not be, and I'll tell you why I think so, and this is because depends on what you will offer like services, because there are many hosting companies out there, and each company offers their own type of uh, vision of, of the services, of their values, of their passions, not everyone, they're, they're just to give a more clear example, you have cheap hosting services, you have average like type of prices, uh, then you have extremely uh, extremely expensive hosting solutions. And this is perfect because not everyone looks for type A, type B or type C. There will be people that will look for your types of services there will be, and you can refer the other people that come to you and say, hey, I, I'm happy with your service but I also need this for a separate project. And then you say, okay, go to Skyrim or go somewhere else. Like, this, is, uh, this is the good thing about the variety of the market and, and that there are so many companies out there because there's things for everyone. There are services for everyone, there are solutions for everyone and, and not everyone wants the same thing. Not everybody wants the same things. I don't know if I answered your question, but thanks. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, they have one more question. Okay, really sorry. Uh, hi, thank you very much for the presentation. I would like to uh, ask for some statistics from SiteGround. Uh, how many times were you turned out, uh, turned down by uh, your offer? to mm -hmm. other big companies for partnership, and how many times have you turned down uh, other uh, companies for partnership? Oh, well, I'm not sure this is information that we should be revealing, just because it's a uh, it's, it's statistic. Interesting uh, statistic. It happens. Um, it has happened, and I'm sure it will happen in the future sometimes. But uh, this is not something that I don't think that you should focus a lot on that unless it happens all the time that you get denied. Like when, when someone accepts your offer, perfect. But uh, if, if you are denied your proposals all the time, then you should start thinking of different strategy. And you should start thinking of different ways to communicate things maybe, and 
maybe to look for different type of partners to make the proposals to. And uh, just another question, mm -hmm. according to you, what is the biggest mistake uh, people make when asking a partnership from Cyprus? Mm, the, I, I mentioned it in one of the slides, the, one of the things that a lot of people do is to not know what they come from. And they don't have an idea what they want from us. And they just say, hey, let's do something together. I know you're a big company, let's do something together. And you're like, okay, but what do you want to do? Like, uh, we need to know what you exactly want from us. Do you want uh, support? Do you want to refer your clients to us? Do you want to, uh, to place your, um, for example, if you have a team shop, if you want to place it in our marketplace, or stuff like that. Like it's, you, this is maybe one of the biggest mistakes that people do. Um, this is why it's also important to do your research, to do your homework, to have a good understanding of what that company that you're looking for has to offer as well, and what, what kind of clients they have. What, what is their business values, their history? It's just anything that can reveal anything that can reveal information which will be valuable for you when you make that proposal. It's 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 this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that people do. Not uh, not something else. The other um, other other big mistake that I can think of maybe will be the way of communicating things. Because uh, when you when you use super fancy words and you, especially when email communicating, when you use like uh, uh, like words that nobody uses and nobody understands anymore, it's a uh, it's like it's overdone. It's like it's too much, and people don't have time to read that because at the end you read the whole lot of sentence or email, and you don't even know what, where's the focus. So it's important to be precise and to, to just say what exactly you want and what you can offer and what people should expect. Just be clear on it. I, did that answer your question? Okay, we are out of time, really sorry. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you.